Hey everybody, Ryan Daly coming at you again with another episode of Super Data Brothers. In today's episode, Cognos Analytics datasets. What are they? Why do you want to use them? And how do you build them? This is a really important topic, I think, because datasets have shown themselves to be one of the keys to unlocking better performance and self-service within Cognos. So what are datasets? Datasets are a collection of columns from one or more sources that are combined into a single view. The data is actually extracted and loaded into a Parquet file. Now a Parquet file is an extremely common analytics file type. It's a columnar file type. You find it not just in Cognos, you find it all over the place. It's probably the most common file type, for example, if you're building an analytics focused data lake. What Cognos does is it extracts the data, puts it in the Parquet file, and then houses it locally. And this is different from what it does if you're not using a data set because historically Cognos is designed to do live query against an underlying database, generate SQL, send it to the database and receive a result set. That's not exactly what's happening when you use a data set because of that Parquet file, which is located in Cognos itself, your query never has to leave the Cognos application server in order to render results. When you generate this Parquet file, it's stored within Cognos and then it's actually loaded into memory at runtime which allows you to do really much more interactive things because the performance is generally really good. And that's one of the biggest reasons I advocate you use data sets because in my experience, the performance can be light years better than generating SQL at runtime and sending it to an underlying database. Huge improvement that I've seen in the real world with my clients. Now, why should you build these? Well, we covered the first reason already. It's that the performance can be much, much better. The other reason to do this is because framework manager or transformer models are too slow or too complex for self-service. If you've got a framework manager model that's got 1,700 tables in it, your end users are never going to be able to make heads or tails of it. But you can create a data set on top of that framework manager model. So all the work you did is reused, but you've created a simplified, highly performant, data set that your end users can interact with for self-service purposes. If you want to limit costly SQL results via query reuse, data sets are a great way to do that because remember, we're no longer going to the underlying database. We're just hitting that Parquet file housed within Cognos. I also use it a lot to accomplish ETL or data blending tasks directly within Cognos. Instead of going to a different tool, you know, we're doing it in the underlying data warehouse. It's just much quicker. Now you're not always going to want to do that, but in a lot of cases it works really well. And the final thing I would say is, you know, if someone says to you, hey, Cognos is really slow, but Power BI is fast or Tableau is fast. Well, Power BI and Tableau are built on this data extraction paradigm where you're running a batch load of data into the BI tool and then all the queries are going against that preloaded, pre-aggregated data. This is one of the biggest reasons that Cognos is perceived as being slower because Cognos is often asking the underlying database to do aggregations on the fly rather than containing pre-aggregated data within the BI tool itself. So if you're hearing that a lot, that is a big reason why you might wanna take a look at data sets. All right, so let's jump into it. How do we actually build these? What are the best practices and what should we do? All right, so here you can see I've got a Cognos 11.2 open. And the first thing to understand about building a data set is you're not gonna see an easy way to just do it. If you click prepare data, for example, you, it, this gives you the ability to build a data module, but not a data set. Likewise, if you come over here to the hamburger menu and choose new, you're not gonna see data set there either. Now, why is that? It's because a data set is built off of a pre-existing model. This is a very important thing to understand. So it can be a transformer model, it can be uh, a framework manager model, it can be a data module, but it ha you have to have some pre-existing form of model available within Cognos to create the data set on. So what do we do here? Let's take a look at content. Now I've got the Great Outdoors data module. You know I always do everything out of this data module because this ships with Cognos and you can follow along with me as I go through these, these steps. When you click on this on the action menu, that's when you see the ability to create a data set. So this is the only way to access this. You click on a pre-existing model and you choose create data set. This will open the data set building screen. In the data set building screen, you have a lot of options that should be very familiar to you if you're a Cognos Analytics report author, because what this really is, is it's a reskinned version of 
report authoring. And, and at this point, it's really lightly reskinned. When these initially came out, you had hardly any of the report authoring capabilities in here, but that's not really the case anymore. Now you can do almost everything. And I'm gonna have a more advanced data sets video coming next. Uh, I'll put a card here for you to check that out. That is gonna walk into some of the more complicated features here. But for now, we're gonna build a pretty straightforward data set and show you how to get these into your environment and get them scheduled and start building off of them. The first thing you're gonna see, I have basically a list object here where I can add data. And let's say in this case, we wanna do an analysis of our retailers, of the products they sell and when they sold them, okay? This is a perfect example of simplifying what is a more complicated model. You can see I've got, I don't know, a dozen tables here into just a single table. So it'll look like to your end users, a single table that's gonna have great performance and be easy for them to use. So let me grab uh, to start, let's just take the re, uh, region, retailer country and the company name, okay? And I'll drag those in. And you'll notice I'm in page design mode, just like if I were in report authoring, there's really no difference here. Then let's take a look at our product information. Well, let's take the product line uh, and the product itself. And we'll nest those in here. Now we wanted some time information. I'll go ahead and grab that. It's very simple. Let's take year, quarter, month. And finally, let's grab just all of the measures. So everything you see here, I'm gonna drop in. Now, it's a good practice to kind of build this way in, in page design mode and then switch over to page preview because remember we're doing that live SQL query. And so I've had situations where it might take five or 10 minutes to see the results here in page preview. Uh, but the beauty of this is that type of slow query only has to be run once. So right now I'm fetching that data into Cognos. Now I have it. And once I save this data set and load this data set, I'm not gonna go to this underlying database again. The data is gonna come out of Cognos itself in that Parquet file that we discussed earlier. So here you can see my results set. I can eyeball this and see, you know, is this good? Do I like it? Do I not? One important thing to note that you can do here, two, two capabilities I want to highlight. The first would be to filter. So it's generally a good idea to keep these data sets under roughly eight to 10 million rows. That's one of the best practices we want to follow here. And in order to do that, you might want to filter these down. I want to focus on just the Americas, either because I want to reduce the row count or maybe I'm building a specific analysis for the America sales team or something like that. So I wanna filter out all the other data. I can go ahead and choose Americas and you'll notice I have the filter option here and just choose include Americas. So now it's gonna run the query again. It's gonna return the results. You can see I only have the Americas here. Now, the second thing that you might wanna do, and this is another best practice, is you wanna filter these based on the items that you think are most likely gonna be used to filter a query or appear on, I would say, the X axis of a chart, okay? And why do you wanna do that? Well, these columnar data, data types, they are a little different than traditional relational database tables in that they read down the columns to find the data they're looking for. So if you sort a column in the order that you think it's gonna be used, that is really helpful for finding the data. It, it groups the data together when you sort it. And then it also might put it in the order that's gonna be displayed on, uh, on the axis of a chart. And that's really helpful as well. So in this case, let's say I know that retailer country is gonna be used as a filter a lot in the underlying reports. Well, I can come in here and I can choose to sort it, say in ascending order. And you'll notice it's gonna execute the query and now I've got it sorted in ascending order. So if I'm building a report that I know the prompt on it is gonna be country, I'll go ahead and pre-sort the, the data set at this point. This means that the parquet file that gets loaded into memory will be in the order you see here. This will group the values together and make your performance much better. So this is something you wanna make sure you do. You can do more complicated sorting in here. Say first you wanna sort by country and then you wanna sort by company name. Well, that's no problem. Um, you'll notice you have the edit layout sorting exactly like you do in reporting. And then I can add you know, a second sort uh, here. And so now I'm gonna sort retailer country, then I'm gonna sort by company name. And you'll see that we get the same results um, where we've got retailer country sorted. And then within the countries, we've got sorted by company names. So you can kind of cascade these on the columns that are most commonly gonna be used to filter or displayed on the x-axis. 
you're going to get much better performance if you do things that way. Now, another thing you can do in here is you can actually access the query editor. This wasn't true before, I think, Cognos 11.1.6. You didn't have access to this. Now you do. So if you know how to use this, and, and I will cover this in the advanced video that's going to be coming out shortly, how to use this and why to use this and some of the advanced things you can do in here. Um, but just know that it's available. So all of these functions, you know, unions, you guys all know I have strong opinions on unions. <laughs> I have very strong opinions on unions if you've seen our, our previous videos. Uh, but you can do them here. You can create new queries. You can enter your own SQL. Very powerful thing to note. I mean, I'll cover those techniques in the more advanced video. Uh, other things that you want to do know here. Well, if at any time you want to eliminate everything you have in here, you can click the reset button. Okay. This is especially important if you've got multiple queries in the data set and you want to switch which query is driving the actual results that go into the data set. You click the reset button and it'll take care of that. Now, let's say this is good, right? So I wanted to do an analysis for the Americas of uh, retailers, products, the time of year, and then how much was sold. We're good to go. Uh, let's go ahead and create our data set. So you're gonna wanna click up here and choose, you have two options, save as or save and load data. The difference is that if you choose save as, is, save as it's not going to load the data, it's just gonna save a data set definition. If you choose save and load data, it will do both. It will save the definition and load the data at the same time. I'm going to choose save as uh, just to show you how this works. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll create a new folder here, call it uh, data sets. And within the data sets folder, we might call this America's sales analysis. Okay, I'm going to save that. Now it's been saved, but the data hasn't been loaded because I didn't choose save and load data, which means I can't use this to build any content yet. I have to load the data before I build any content. And to show you what that looks like, you can see I've got the data set here. This is the data set icon. When I choose the action menu, uh, you will see the refresh button. So when you click this refresh button, it, that's when it's gonna load the data into the data set if you don't choose the save and load data when you create it. So let's go ahead and do that. You'll get a notification that pops up telling you hey, uh, your data is refreshing. Now this can take a long time, right? Uh, let's imagine you've got a framework manager model that's really slow. People complain that it takes forever for the reports to run. Well, you know it's slow. You know the data set is gonna take a long time to load. I've created data sets that take three or four or five hours to load. But the thing about it is because we've now disconnected from that underlying data source and we've loaded the data into the Cognos application server memory, it takes five hours for the data set to load, but once the data set is loaded, it the, the actual interactive query performance is really, really fast. And, and that's one of the big advantages of, of taking this approach. One hour later. And case in point, I edited out that data set load time, so you don't have to sit through it. Um, let's take a look at how do I know how long it took? How do I see statistics about that? Well, again, in the action menu, you're going to look at the properties of the data set and when you expand advanced, this is really where you're gonna see everything that there is to see. So for example, I can see here the created date, the modified date, when it was last refreshed. And if you scroll down, I can see the size, the number of rows, the columns, and how long it took to refresh, okay? So all of that data you can see there. Now, you don't wanna come in and manually load this every time. You wanna be able to do this on a schedule and and data sets actually have the exact same scheduling features of reports. Uh, so again, you're gonna see that in the properties menu, under schedule, you can choose create schedule. And here you get the report authoring scheduling features. It's exactly the same as, as you would have there. So you could say, I want this to load every Monday morning um, at a particular time say, uh, you know, 4 a.m., maybe that's when the data warehouse load gets finished. The other thing that you can do here uh, is you actually have the ability to choose by trigger. So this is a very common thing in Cognos. Rather than guessing when the data warehouse load is gonna finish, you just write a little application that when the data warehouse load is finished, it submits a trigger word to the Cognos server. You put that trigger word here, uh, maybe it's data set. And when Cognos server detects the trigger word data set, it will build this data set. And so then you, you don't have to rely on getting all the timings right. Everything will automatically flow through. Okay, now 
How do you use this in a report or a dashboard? Well, it's exactly the same as any other model type with one exception, and it's this. You'll notice that I don't have the ability to directly create a report. So if I wanna create a dashboard off of this or an exploration off of this, I can just go ahead and do that. I don't have to do anything else. But if you wanna use it in reporting, you're gonna to have to nest it in a data module. And that's easy enough to do. I'll choose create data module here. And you can see uh, that it's already put it in for me. Here's all the, the fields I selected. I've got all the normal data module features in here. It's exactly like any other table in a data module. There's, there's no difference at this point. Um, so if I wanted to use this in a report, now I would have to go ahead and save this. And we'll call this uh, data set module. And now I'm able to use this in a report, whereas before I wasn't able to. Okay. So those are the basics of data sets and, and why and how you want to use them. To summarize that, it's they perform better, they're simple for end users to understand, and they're great for self-service. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you find it useful, go ahead and click the like and subscribe button down below. Leave us a comment. Let us know what else do you want to see on the Super Data Brothers channel? What other tools are you interested in? What other features of Cognos or Power BI are you interested in? We are here to help you take your business intelligence game to the next level. Until next time, I'm Ryan Dolly. Take it easy.